Hi guys and welcome back to Enigma 77 Review. So today you're in my kitchen so you can kind of guess what kind of video today is going to be. So it's Zach's upcoming birthday on Tuesday which is the 29th. It's a shame I didn't hold out to the 31st but he is being asking me for cupcakes and um, I'm not the most confident baker but my husband is. And obviously my mum's like, a, my mother-in-law is a cake maker. So I've been around them enough to know what to do now. So I thought today I would get stuck in when it comes to baking. I am going to be doing two different kinds of baking today, guys. So I'm going to be doing cupcakes as requested by Zach. He has actually picked some of the stuff that he wants. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so I'm going to try the um, Betty Crocker. And this is the chocolate icing. Some people might think this is cheating. Why don't you make your own icing? I could make my own icing, but I'm just giving myself more jobs to do. And this is the zesty lemon. So these two are the ones that Zach has requested. But guys, if you've remembered in my last video, I also got the Halloween frosting. So I am hoping today to do half batch, which is like based around Zach, because that's what he wants. And I'm going to base the other half down to like Halloween. So I do have three lots of frosting, guys. I also have like the Halloween cupcakes as well as normal cupcakes and the Halloween kit. So there's little things in there you can actually stick on. And I've got such thing as sprinkles. So as for cupcakes, I'm well prepared on that one. After we have finished doing the cupcakes, I'm going to go on to gingerbread Halloween biscuits then. They're based around just the Halloween theme. Um, Zach hasn't requested them. I'm just going to do them for you. I'm going to do that together. So I'm going to get stuck in. I've already prepped everything, guys, because time is key and we don't want to be here all day. So I have put the um, the eggs. I've separated the whites from it. The whites are in this bowl here, which I'm going to mix into like a meringue, which is going to done with the hand blender. And then you've got your yolks here, which I'm going to add to my cake mixture. I've actually got... I brought it down, but my measurements are going to be completely different to yours, guys. I've actually thrown it in the wash now. But I use these measuring cups, and this one is a half cup. You can buy these anywhere really, really cheap. It's dripping because I have just put it in the wash. But I use these half cup measurements. And in my measurements here, I've actually got three of them cups. And I've got the... Which flour have I used here? So it's a self-raising home pride flour. I only use this one. I do have plain, I do have self raisin, and I do have one that I use for my when we're making bread. So in here is that one, guys, which is three cups of flour. And then I've got four eggs in there, guys. These are like medium sized eggs. If you've got large eggs, I would only use the three, but these are medium sized eggs, so you get away with using four. Now for butter, I've got one and a half of them cups in butter. Um, I have used like stock. I do use stock when I'm doing like my usual when I do my frosting, but we're not going to do that today. Uh, and then I've got like this Asda one. I have got like five of these because I'm going to be doing a lot of baking um, this week and next week. So that's that as well. And I've got just the free range eggs in there. I've also got like my ice and sugar if I need to decorate or powder anything else. Um, then I've got like milk as well guys, so I've got one cup of milk and I mean cup as in that cup, not this cup, so that's in there as well which I will be adding. And that my sugar here which is my caster sugar, I do use the silver spoon caster sugar guys. Um, you can use any you want to, um, but with sugar it's two and a quarter cups guys. So I have measured everything out, ready to go and call me a cheeto but I do have a Kenwood mixer. Um, vanilla is what I'm going to use today. So I've got the Madagascan vanilla. I do have like Sicilian lemon. I have salted caramel. I have almond. I have strawberry. I have raspberry. And I have normal vanilla. But today I'm just going to keep it with vanilla because when you're starting adding all different flavours, it means like separating all your mixture and so forth. And it just gets long wind, long winded and you, you don't want to be here all day. So this is my Kenwood mixer, guys. You're best off using this kind um, of tool when you are mixing cakes and stuff. And this is what I use when I'm kneading my bread, if I make bread, which is not that often, but I do every now and again. So, guys, we're going to start by adding the butter 
Did I say how much butter goes in there? This is one and a half of them cups of butter, so you get to see. I'm going to add this into the bowl, guys. I do have some tools here. So I do have, like, my mixing spoons, if you need to kind of, like, get it all off there so you're not losing any of your ingredients. So that's my butter in there, guys. Once I've done that, I need my sugar, where is it? So add your sugar in there. So all we're going to be doing, guys, is mixing your butter and your sugar. And we're going to mix that until you have a creamy texture or a creamy consistency. Now, you can add your vanilla as well now if you want to. You can add it once it's mixed. I'm going to add it once it's mixed. I'm just going to let this kind of mix in itself. And then I'm just going to put it on a medium speed, guys. <laughs> Medium speed. <laughs> now you may need to stop this as well, guys. Now I'm going to switch off and we're going to come back when this is done. But when mixing, guys, you're going to find some of your mix just up to the side. Just give that a bit of a bang, like so, so it gets right in there again. I'm going to add my vanilla now, guys, while it's starting to go into that consistency. You can add as much as you want. I'm going to add... I'm just going to add that in there. We like vanilla. Why not? Usually about three capfuls there, guys. You can taste it, and if you don't feel like it tastes that well or that... Okay guys, so I've mixed it into a creamy um, consistency, so now it's time to do your flour. I'm going to mix, just lift that up as far as it goes. So for your flour guys, you've got to sieve. They do say to prefer to sieve the flour, but I'm only going to be sieving half of it guys. So here's my sieve. I'm just going to try and do it so it's not going to be banging on there. So on the half of your flour guys, I'm trying to do this so you guys can see. <laughs> so just half of your flour will go in there, guys. Save the other half. We'll do that once the egg yolks have been put in. And then just, just sip that in, guys. It'd help if this wasn't in the way. Just tap it. There we go. That would have been easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> So just sift that in, if you feel like there needs to be a little bit more in there, I mean I feel there could be a tiny bit more in there. I'm going to save that for once the eggs have gone in. So it sieves pretty quickly guys, put that back on there. And then obviously now you want to add the eggs. So add that in. And then we're going to mix that together guys, so then... My thing keeps falling apart on here. Just mix that slowly, guys. So you get like a breadcrumb effect. Lift that right up. We're going to add the rest of this flour now, guys, into there and sieve it through. And then we're just going to mix that through, and that's your mixture done. Help if I didn't actually take half the mixture with me. Okay, put that on there. Close that down. That's high speed, guys. If you need to just give it a quick whip. Right, we're back in the jiffy, guys. Guys, we're going to start adding the milk bit by bit just to get that creamy consistency going. I'm just going to add it in the side here and then just do it nice and slowly. It does need a bit more mixing. So we're going to start the next stage, guys, after I've finished this. It's still a little bit tough at the bottom. I'm going to give it one last go. Okay. So I'm satisfied. 
satisfied with that. So next I'm going to move on to my egg whites. I'm going to get that into a consistency of a meringue. Start this off slowly guys because you don't want it everywhere. And just tilt your bowl slightly. And then just give it a good old mix guys. It will start to thicken up really quick. Guys, let me just show you the consistency it is starting to develop. So as you can see, but it is still very, very runny. So I'm going to go off, I'm going to finish this, and I'm going to come back when I'm ready to fold it in. So back in a different guys. Okay, guys, so obviously this is the consistency of my cake batter mixture. And it's not completely like runny, runny. Don't want it too runny. But I need to start folding half of the eggs. So here is my eggs, and as you can see... How funny guys would that have been that fell on my head. So you only want to put half in at the minute guys. So just half and just put that in there like so. So we're going to mix this in guys. With this second half that we've got here we're going to fold in. So first we're going to mix and then we're going to fold. So we're just going to mix it in guys into all the mixture. Make sure you get right down to the bottom. And then you start to notice that the consistency is getting softer and easier to mix. Get right in there, guys. I think when I used to make cakes, <laughs> a lot of the times I made from a box, like when my older three were younger. Um, I wasn't a massive baker, but every now and again we did used to bake. I think I bake more now with Zach than, uh, mind you, me and Leah used to bake quite a lot when she was at home. Um, we was always, always baking cakes. It was probably one of her favourite pastimes was, was making cakes with mum. Right guys, so this does need mixing again, but I'm quite happy with that all being mixed in. Now, the next part we're going to do is we're going to fold it in, and we're going to fold it in a figure eight. Now, I don't really like this process because obviously you've got to try and do it so you're not going to get any air bubbles in. So I'm going to put it into the middle, and then I'm just going to fold it. So I'll start with this bit here. So we're going to mix it so that the mixture is going over, guys. So over, and then over. So it's in like... A figure eight, but you want to put your mixture so it's going over the egg whites like so. You need good arms, I think, when you when you bake. I mean, I for one find that if I was to do this every day, my back would probably break as well as my arms. So you want all the white folded in guys tip it if you need to get right down to the bottom right down to the sides fold that in now i'm happy that that is all folded and i've still got the rest it gets very sticky guys if that's the case just give your hands a quick wash so i'm going to put the last of the line in there sweet put that there and then just fold that last bit in, guys. So fold, fold, fold. Fold, fold, fold. Once we've done this, guys, we are going to get ready to start pouring the mixture into our cupcake cases. Now, I, if you remember the video that I did when it was the Asda, um goodie shop i actually bought the cake casings for halloween and i do have normal cupcake casings anyway because obviously we do a lot of baking in this house i can still see some of the egg whites so i'm just going to try and get that right down around get down the sides i don't want any egg white at all showing fold all that in my my spatula is getting a bit sticky guys so i may have to give it a wash right so this is the consistency of it now as you can see it's a lot 
more easy to manage. Let's give that another mix. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands, guys. Then we're going to come back and we're going to start the process of getting this in the tins. Ew! Back in a jiffy. Okay, guys. So I've given it another mix. I've had to wash my hands because they were very sticky and I've had to wash like the spatula. I'm happy that this is ready to get in now. I've mixed the side just to make sure that there's no egg whites present at all. Now, you're not going to use the mixer again now, guys. So it's a matter of just getting this in to your cakes. So just move this aside. Now my, what I like to do guys is while them cakes are in the oven, I tend to like wash up and clean up and wash around and then it's ready to decorate the cakes. I've got a bit more of a surface. Today we're going to be making ginger biscuits as well. So it's going to be a bit of a long one guys. So get your mixture and then you're just going to scrape it. Just, just put enough in just to keep the casing down and let that just mold through. You can add to it. Now I have got a massive cake tin, so I could probably do like 12 in one go, but they're not very deep. And I found that when I've done cakes in the past in that tin, they've kind of like gone over. I'll show you the tin in a minute. They're kind of like cooked over the top and then burnt and I just, I just think the deeper the cake tin, the better. So if you are going to do cupcakes, you really do need a really good... I mean, I, I, I normally borrow my mother-in-law's um, silicone one, but obviously she's a cake maker and she's had to make a lot of cakes recently. So I've not, like, asked her if I could borrow it, although she probably would anyway. I mean, um, Monday Zach's going to Lego, uh, Legoland, Thomas Land with Dad and Grandad. Um, I'm not going obviously because I can't go for the obvious reasons and um, Nanny's not going because she's like me, she can't really go on any rides so it's not much fun for us to go so I think we're going to stay at home and bake like good little housewives <laughs> right guys so I've, I've put enough mixture in there I've not filled it right to the top because obviously it's going to rise I've got lots of mixture left I think out of this I'd probably get a 6, 12, maybe 18 cakes out of it. Let me just show you now. So they're filled. I have got the oven preheated and I think it's on gas mark 6, which is probably about 180. These are the cake cases. So we've got the pumpkin one with like cobwebs and spiders. And then we've got the purple ghosty one. I think these are really cute actually. Then I've got these as well, which I can decorate. I'm not too sure if I'm going to pipe icing on these cakes, we'll see, or if I'm just going to spoon the icing on top so it's just like a ring of icing on top and then put the decorations. I do have lots of decorations, guys, for the cupcakes. Let me just grab these. I do have these as well, which are the Angel Cakes Trick or Treat, which I may just put in the middle with the icing. I haven't decided, and obviously I've got the sprinkles, so... We'll decide near the time, but now guys, I'm going to bang this in the oven. It's preheated, like I've said. I'm just going to place that in there, in the middle. Uh, I'm going to keep it in there about 15 minutes, but I will check them. Um, and we'll come back then and we'll finish off. So I'll see you in a jiffy, guys. Okay, guys, so I've been gone quite a while because there was lots and lots of mixture. And I was like, God, this is never ending. So I have finished. Here is one that I have cut. This is one of the first batteries that I did. I just want you to see, this is how it's turned out. It's good size, which is what I want. I don't want a massive one. And if you're wondering why the hell this looks like this, I'll explain. So I have cut it. So you can see that it is very spongy texture. It's lovely. And it smells just, just like vanilla, because that's the only kind of um, flavouring that I've added to this. You can add whatever you want. I've just chosen vanilla today because vanilla and ginger are quite a nice mix together. And as you know, I'm doing biscuits as well. So I didn't want too many different flavours going on. So the texture of this is absolutely amazing. I left them in for about 25 minutes, guys. Obviously, when you're checking, this one's just come out of the oven. You just put your knife in and as you can see it is clear if this wasn't done 
it would be very wet on the knife which tells you that it does need a little bit longer now this one is one that i just thrown in because i had some mixture left and i didn't want it to go to waste. so i've just actually just thrown this in now i've kept this in a little bit longer and i just wanted to show you um the difference i mean this has only been kept in three minutes longer but you can see it does start to catch around the edges and that can be a little bit crunchy i don't mind my cakes like that but some may be a little bit particular and as you can see it was starting to catch at the bottom as well so if i left that any longer it would have actually burned and i think i'd left that in for 30 minutes so always check leave them in for roughly about 15 to 20 minutes before you open the door to check if you can see they've risen and they're a nice golden color maybe then you expect right to take them out and just just do the knife test on them so that's one that i've left in a little bit longer to show what happens but this was left in for 25 minutes it's nice and soft it's not burnt it's very soft at the bottom and as for taste mm, it's nice it's not actually too dry either it's a nice texture obviously i'm going to be decorating the cake excuse me but just on the initial taste test of that i am happy with that i'm really pleased with that so the cakes are here guys i've just put them into this tin so there's somewhere for them to sit and as you can see they are slightly different in sizes because obviously you're not going to know how much mixture you're putting in every case all the time so some are put in more than others but they've risen to um the top of the cake okay so that's not too bad and here's the other ones again this is one that i put in for longer so you can see the difference but i'm happy with that guys and as you can see they are a lovely fit in these cases i'm quite happy with these cases so guys obviously i've got to let them cool down completely before i start icing them now i do have three lots of icing i've got the halloween frosting in orange i've also got a lemon and i've got a chocolate now i'm not going to pipe all of them but i have got the piping out for the halloween so what i've done guys is just a regular piping bag i have like a whole bag of these I have little funnels and I have all different sized funnels. Oh, where the hell have I put them? Here they are. Um, so you've got like your ooh, thin sized one, depending how you want to pipe it. You've got your string one and then you've got your normal regular round one. And I've gone for the like the flowered kind of one and it's the biggest one in there. What we're going to do when we are decorating, guys, I just need to dry that because I have to wash this, is you're just going to put your frosting inside your bag as tight as you possibly can and then when you're happy it's full just squeeze it right down to the bottom just tie a little little knot or put some string on there and then just pipe out on top of your cake obviously i'm going to do that with you guys but i have just washed this so i've got to let these dry completely before i start that guys but as you can see i am actually finished now I have washed everything ready for the biscuits because we're going to do that as well. So this is a long video, guys. If you don't like it, fast forward it. I just don't watch it. So we'll come back in about 10 minutes. These are cool and ready to go. We might just start doing these, but these are still hot. So two minutes, we'll get this prepared and then we'll get stuck into decorating. See you in a jiffy. So guys, I've only put some of it in. As you can see, there's still plenty left because obviously I'm not going to use too much. But I'm just going to give an example of what one's going to look like because I'm not going to do all these on camera because you're just going to get bored. But I'm just going to show you an example of one. I'm not the best at piping, guys, but let's go for this one here. So I'm just going to go in like a circular motion. You can do whatever you want as for piping. Like I said, I'm not the world's best piper. But this is just... I'm kind of do like an, I'm trying to do like a web effect if that makes sense by using this I could have actually gone further in the middle and I haven't but you kind of get the the gist of what I'm trying to do here so I'm just going in a circular motion to make it look like a spider's web that effect obviously these will go in the fridge guys because I do need the icing to set at the minute they're just very very soft and it's very warm in my kitchen or you could do a circular motion one i am bob at icing <laughs> and you can rise that up a bit as you can see i'm not brilliant at piping guys i really am not all you can do
just tiny little blobbers. I think I might have picked the wrong actual piping um, utensil for this. The one that I'm looking for isn't actually there. I mean, this is orange flavour, guys. I'm not too sure how Zach fares with orange, which is why I don't want to do too many buns in orange. But there you go. There's just an impression of three. Obviously, I've got to do lemon. So what I might do is four in the orange, four in the lemon, and four in chocolate, and then two lemon there, two orange, and two thing there. So it's it's kind of like a fair. I'm just trying to think if I can just... Right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll show you another version that I do. We just put loads on there so you can see. There is another version where I can just, you just spread that down. I'm actually using the wrong tool. I've actually got a butter knife, which is made for like this kind of thing. I will get it out so you can see. But if you can just smooth it to the edges of the cake, all the way around. So it kind of gives it that clear, smooth, icing around the top obviously the knife that I usually use for this is better but once the icing's dry just cover your edges guys as much as you can as long as all the top of the cake is covered with icing when that dries it will just be like a solid block of icing and then you can just neaten around the edges like so it is very very sweet guys i've got to tell you. i'm not a great lover of icing Blech. that is very sweet guys wow i heck yeah i don't think i'll use any more of the icing to be honest i think i will put that away i mean it has to be used within a certain time um but we'll have a look into that so that is that one guys now this would be a bit of a waste to be honest with you so i might just use the rest of that but i do have these little icing things as well which i'm going to use to put on and i've got such thing as a little gingerbread man now these would be probably be better put on the likes of the flat one and then use the sprinkles for these ones and i have got sprinkles guys i mean these are just based on halloween but because it is Zach's birthday, you can I've got to mix it up a little bit. So these are black and white. I did want the orange ones, but I thought if I'm going to be using, like, and there, uh, I've lost one. These just look like um, candy. Just regular candy. Now, guys, I'm going to put these in the fridge. So when I do the final reveal, you will see that I have put them into the fridge so there you go so that is my first four as an example i mean i've actually got these as well i mean some of these cakes i might put in the fridge and then give them to the um trick-or-treaters when they come round. there we've got a little spider we'll put them in the middle good idea these guys then we've got this little ghosty then we've got some kind of pumpkin turtle if i can get my hands in there to get it out they're all stuck together actually guys that one's actually stuck together okay so i'm going to put this one here because obviously we've got a gingerbread there so guys what i will do is i'm going to put them in the fridge and let them set and when we come back we will get started on the gingerbread but that's so far i am going to do the lemon at the end you'll get to see what they look like all together so um i'll see you in a bit guys okay guys so i have finished the cupcakes let me just quickly show you so obviously i did lemon i have put these in the fridge guys for an hour i've let the icing set i will put them back in the fridge in the container but i want to keep them like this so that can see so as you can see i've used like um orange sprinkles there i've used blue sprinkles there i've used the skulls and there I've used the icing and I have put like the little things inside just to make it a little bit extra for the boy. So these are for Zach for his birthday, but it is Halloween too. So he gets a double whammy theme. 
Here I've put like little Kinder Egg because Zach is not really into anything like sprinkles or toffees. He will take all these um, sweety things off here. He doesn't eat sweets. But he knows mum well enough to know that I will decorate as well. Um, I am baking again on Monday, guys, um, because obviously it's, it's Zach's birthday, which these are like we'll have now this weekend to celebrate his birthday. But whatever we don't have, I will bake again on Monday and make another batch. But you kind of get the gist of how it's done now. So there you go, guys. Look good enough to eat. So lemon, chocolate and orange. This the orange one, um, I wasn't a great fan of when I was like tasting it. I just thought, ooh, not really my thing. It didn't taste it so much of orange, but I did buy that from Home Bargains and it was really cheap. But these, I paid a lot more for, these tubs of icing. We tend to use this icing constantly. We get like strawberry, vanilla, lemon, chocolate, raspberry. We do get all kinds of um, flavours in there. Salted caramel as well, we've had... But I thought we needed orange and I haven't seen this brand with orange. So there you go, guys. I have done the taste test. They taste absolutely scrummy. I've even tasted with the lemon. Not great for my diet. But all in all, there we go. So guys, pop your comments on below. Let me know what you think. These are like little chocolate coins in between. I was actually going to stick them on the cake. If you don't have such decorations like this, you can just stick some random coins, which are 99p for a bag, and just like stick them on top of the cake. It's a bit of an extra treat for kids. Not only have they got a piece of chocolate, they've got their cake as well. So take care, guys. Happy Halloween. And um, from me to you, from Zach, have a good one. Bye.